Good afternoon. My name is Jason Conley. I'm the executive director of OmniAir Consortium. For those of you not familiar with OmniAir, we are the leading industry association promoting interoperability and certification for ITS tolling and connected vehicles. Uh, I would like to welcome you to today's parade of test stations. In a short while, you will hear from all of the leading test equipment providers and test laboratories participating in our Costa del Sol Plug Fest later this month. Uh, we'll provide a, a comprehensive review of the testing that will be offered at this event. Um, uh, back to on the air, our 95 members from around the world represent a cross-section of the connected vehicle uh, ecosystem. We have automotive OEMs deploying public agencies, engineering firms, device manufacturers, chipset providers, test laboratories, and test equipment providers. Omnier offers independent third-party testing and certification uh, for both VitaX and tolling equipment through a network of accredited and authorized test laboratories using qualified test systems and validated test cases. Last year, Omnier launched the world's first LTE VitaX certification program for OVUs, RSUs, and modules, and it remains the only a comprehensive certification program for LTV to X devices. Omni-Air certification provides that assurance that is required by OEMs and deploying agencies to ensure that devices conform to industry standards and meet minimal interoperability performance and security requirements. On behalf of Omni-Air, I would like to welcome you uh, to this re uh, testing review event. Over the next hour, we will hear from participating test equipment, SCMS providers, and participating test laboratories about that comprehensive testing that will be, will be taking place uh, in the next month. Um, the Costa del Sol Plug Fest will be our 10th on the air plug fest and the third focused exclusively on CB to X technologies. We are proud to partner for this event with DECRA, our first on the air authorized test laboratory for CB to X testing, um, as they will host this event uh, the week of October 24th through 28th. Uh, at DECRA's world-class connected and automated vehicle test facility in Malaga, Spain. Since 2017, Omnier has hosted plug fests in California, Michigan, Canada, Texas, and in Europe. Uh, these, these events bring together VitaX manufacturers with leading test laboratories and test equipment providers uh, for a week of comprehensive testing. Uh, each participating device will rotate through over a dozen different test stations um, providing comprehensive feedback on the performance of that device and allowing device manufacturers uh, to learn and improve in a cooperative and open environment. Um, on the air plug fests are industry readiness events. They help vendors to prepare for on the air certification and to make sure that these CV to X devices are in fact ready to deploy. I would now like to introduce my colleague, Ryan Hall, on the air's Vice President for Business Development. Uh, he will introduce our participating testing experts to preview the testing that will be offered at their individual test stations during the plug fest. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hall. The floor is yours, sir. Hey, thank you, Jason, and thank you for the great overview. Um, we have a really great, uh, really great agenda. Um, we have our order of presentations. Mixed it a little bit up. We have a lot of our members from Korea, and it's 1.30 in the morning. Um, so I'm trying to put everybody in order. It will kind of, it will um, try to group everyone in the same spot, like Integrity Services and Cecil Tech, um, and you know, group all the, the test stations and things like that. Um, and we have our host DECRA, they will be last but not least. Um, you know, and they will give you a really great overview of their testing capabilities um, at that facility. So we're going to introduce our first <clears throat> our first presenter today. It is um, Hong Jung Jung. He is the CEO of of Wadies. And let me get his slides ready. So, okay, Hong Jung, the floor is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, can sir, we can hear you. Dr. Zhang, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, uh, Ryan, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Hong Jong Jung uh, from uh, Wales. Uh, I'm CTO at the Waitis. Uh, actually, I think uh, most of Omni members are familiar with our VTX driving test tool. And Wade is providing several VTX solutions, including uh, RSC function, te uh, function test system and RSC performance test system. And as well as a future driving test application bench test. And this day we're trying to extend our test area to the Vitex congestion testing. Uh, thanks to the Omni Air's uh, members and uh, comprehensive comments, we can improve our test tools. And uh, I'm, I'm really appreciate of uh, Omni Air's activities. Uh, can you move the, uh, move the next slide, please? Yeah. Uh, in coming Malaga Plug Fest, we will provide with driving test. Uh, I think uh, driving test uh, will cover the BSM performance and co uh, conformance testing according to the SAJ 2945 uh, slash 1A. Actually, so this standard uh, covers the position, elevation, heading accuracy, and path history distance, pet, pet, uh, perpendicular distance, and some hard braking event and certification changes. Uh, in order to cover these te tests, uh, our test system, including several parts, including uh, BSM Sniper and Analyzer and High Precision Genesis System. So our test system received BSM from DOT and we analyze BSM and we'll uh, uh, anal analyze the BSM elements and uh, generate the result. Uh, before, uh, 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 from, uh, for the last one month, we, we have some uh, issues according to the latitude, latitude and longitude acceleration accuracy. So uh, we modified uh, some test case, uh, the test algorithm. So in this coming plug fest, uh, we will provide updated uh, lateral longitude and acceleration results. So, so the next slide. Uh, our test tool, including VTX snippers, support the DSRC as well as LT VTX and high precision genesis and test, uh, test embedded test system. So with this component, our test tool receiving BSM from DOT. Uh, the, this is uh, the bottom bottoms provide the our uh, the user interface for the, our test system. Uh, before testing, we configure the uh, PSM element. Uh, so uh, in, in the in our test system, we classify the PSM by using the let, uh, vehicle size of the PSM. So DOT uh, need to uh, uh, before starting the view. Uh, the DOT vendors should uh, know their vehicle size in the BSM. And then we can start the test. Uh, after the test, uh, we, we will provide some test report with uh, uh, some figures and tables. Please go next slide. Okay, in coming uh, Malaga plug test, we will prepare one test vehicle equipped with our driving test tools. Actually, we will uh, bring two driving test tools. So DUT vendors can prepare, uh, if needed, DUT vendors uh, can prepare two OBUs. Uh, actually, in the previous, uh, the uh, Michigan plug test, some vendors prepared uh, two OBUs with different formers, previous formers and 
new formula and they can compare uh, at the same time. So it, I think it, it, it was very uh, useful for us and as well as for the vendors. And in coming flow fast, uh, we will bring a brand new test system. We call it a VTEXT congestion generator. Uh, the congestion generator will gener uh, transmit PSM in the same test vehicles. So this make some uh, load and overhead uh, to the uh, OVU DUT. Uh, it, it will uh, operate depend on the vendor's request. Uh, I will provide some detailed things in the next slide for the congestion test system. So let's move the next, uh, next slide. Uh, okay, the driving test scenario will cover mainly five, uh, five test scenarios. Uh, at the first, uh, we will cover the ACCU accuracy testing scenario. Uh, the uh, in, this, in this case, we will cover position, elevation, speed, heading, path history, and heading accuracy things. It will take 10 minutes uh, in the, in the, in the, in the a DECRA track, uh, we will uh, design the accuracy tracks, including straight way and curve way. And then uh, we will move to LS LSPD, latching or latching figure eight test cases. Uh, it also will take 10 minutes. And then we will cover the heartbreaking event. It also will take 10 minutes. And then uh, number four, uh, we will make uh, ACCU and security privacy test cases. Actually, it will drive around seven and eight kilometer driving from Decra test track to the uh, uh, along the urban road. We will drive around eight kilometers. So we will check the uh, position accuracy as well as certification changes. And then finally, we will back to the DECRA test track and we will check the power on of cases. Uh, this case will cover uh, the data per persistence of the DUT. So totally, uh, I expect that around 80, between about 90 minutes for the one DUT vendor. Uh, in case uh, the DUT vendor prepare bring only one device, I think we can cover uh, two, uh, two different OBUs in concurrently. It depends on the vendor's request. So uh, actually, we didn't uh, we didn't uh, the design the driving course, but uh, after. Uh, preparing the test course, uh, test route, uh, uh, we will share with you. Uh, this is the sample report. Uh, as you can see, uh, the report including um, graph and tables and the vendors can recognize uh, their performance and what the problem and their uh, performance of the DUT. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Yes, uh, this is the uh, VTEX congestion test system, uh, uh, will, which will be introduced this coming Malaga plug fest. Uh, we can we call it uh, the uh, this uh, this system is designed for the generating VTEX uh, message for the congestion testing system, uh, congestion test scenario, and this this system support uh, wave DSLC. Uh, ITWA02.11P as well as and LTV2X uh, for 3GPP release 14 PC5 communication. Uh, the communication schemes can be switchable uh, by using the software. And in one, uh, the, the one unit uh, can cover the transmitting VTX message up to 250. 
uh, hertz per, uh, per sec, uh, two, 250 messages per second. In case of dynamic, uh, in case of uh, when DUT need to transmit BSM with the dynamic uh, latitude, long, longitude position, uh, we call it a dynamic BSM. Uh, uh, the, the device can transmit 50 message per second for the dynamic BSM. So we use this test tool for the vtx network congestion and interference test as well as device load and stress test. Uh, the figure uh, we're stacking uh, 16 units for the congestion testing in Korea. Uh, let's go. The, uh, let's move to the next slide. Uh, I will introduce some uh, use case in Korea. Uh, in uh, two months ago, we conducted some congestion test in proving ground in one of uh, in proving ground we conducted congestion testing with the 16 vehicles equipped with uh, our vtx congestion test system and these 16 congestion test system controlled by our web based test uh, test ui uh, and each vehicle had uh, as you can see the on the right figure each vehicle uh, on the roof uh, there there are five antenna, vtx antennas. Uh, so with this, uh, the, our test system and antenna, uh, whole vehicles transmit uh, messages from 320 hertz up to uh, 1600. Uh, so with this, uh, this test configuration, we evaluated communication, per, uh, communication performance of the LT vtx V2V and V2I communications. Uh, let's move on the next slide. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for the listening. Uh, I think uh, uh, I prepared a very short uh, video clip. Can you open my video clip? Um. Okay, the video, I, oh, I'm sorry, Hong Jung. I, I will have to incorporate that um, oh, the, at another no point, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't um, incorporate it into the presentation. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Uh, uh, any question for the driving test at, and congestion testing? Okay, well, thank you, thank you very much, Hong Jung. If anybody has any questions, if you want to put them in the in the chat box, um, we'll be happy to answer them or forward them off to. Um, uh, to each of our presenters. Um, up next, we have uh, the Taiwan Telematics Association, TTA. Um, I don't think BK was able to join us today, but I can do a, a quick overview um, of their system and what they're looking at. So um, TTA is also uh, an Omnia member, and they were one of the they're the first test lab in Asia to be certified for CV to X certification programs. We're very excited by that. Um, for this particular for this particular event, uh, TTA is going to perform LTE V to X protocol tests um, with the Spirant test station. So they're going to look at the the Omnia test scopes for IEEE 1609.2 dot three slash three and also SEA 2945-1 and B to I applications. And on this the second slide, um, you know, so uh, pretty much the kind of goes through their uh, the the testing uh, portions, how it goes through the, the Spire LTA system through the device under test, and we're looking to make sure that um, security is being checked at this particular point. Um, I'm sorry, that's the as much information as I have, um, but we have a really great presentation next um, from David King from Essel Tech, um, and I would love to uh, to um, for you to uh, to join us. Okay. Hi all, um, I'm David King from Essel Tech in South Korea. It is my pleasure to present what Cecil will bring to the PlugFest to all of you. Um, 
before we talk about our systems, uh, let me explain briefly about our company. Cecil Tech is a free to cybersecurity startup in start, uh, South Korea. Uh, we have SCMS that supports uh, Camp Wiki and IEEE 1609.2.1, and client that supports uh, IEEE 1609.2 and LCM. And we are partnered with LG Electronics for Fruit 2X cybersecurity. Um, now uh, we can talk about a little bit more interesting than our company's profile. Uh, Cecil will bring two systems uh, to the Plugfest, and one is certificate issuance system, and the other is a test station system. So certificate issues, issuance system is a system that issues certificates uh, in two ways, uh, direct download and through runtime API. You can download uh, end entity certificate directly without bootstrapping process, or you can um, download through runtime API, either requesting uh, bootstrapping data via UI or request uh, bootstrapping data via enrollment request uh, OER. And for OER, it is possible to request multiple files. And uh, we will also provide a website for those of you who want to try this system before Plugfest. It is not open yet, uh, but it will be open by a few weeks before the Plugfest. So if anyone wants to try this website, uh, here is the link for the website on the, on the slide. And right below uh, is my email address. So feel, pre feel free to contact me and I will be happy to help you out. Um, that was our certification system, and now we can talk about the test station system. So our test station is composed of CAMP test and 1609.2.1 test. Uh, CAMP test uh, has a test suite uh, that tests six scenarios uh, based on the Omnier's SCMS test specification document. Uh, we can test that an entity can properly use uh, provided certificates and the process is semi-auto testing. And the image one right here uh, shows how Cecil test station works. And CAMP test also has an automated testing system that is partially based on uh, TCI. Image two is a test station architecture and image three um, is is a uh, its a user interface, and then uh, lastly, uh, it's a sixteen oh nine dot two dot one testing, and it will be proceeded uh, through runtime API manually. It tests uh, enrollment certificate initial request whether there is canonical authentication or not, and whether the certificate. Uh, certificate type is implicit or explicit. It also tests authorization certificate requests and properly loading uh, response certificates, uh, whether pseudonym application and uh, identification certificates uh, properly request and download. And this will be proceeded uh, based on near cybersecurity work, working groups uh, test specification for 1609.2.1. So this is like a really short uh, overview for what we will do at the Plugfest. And yeah, this is it for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate your... Um, uh, presentation and I very much thank you for staying up till uh, two in the morning to deliver it in person. Um, again, if anybody has any questions, I'll be uh, sure to forward those to David um, for him to answer uh, in the morning. So, David, thank you very much. And up thank next, you. we have um, to stay on the same track. We have Brian Ramowski um, from Integrity Security Services uh, to do to go to do his overview. Why, thank you. Why don't you just jump to the next slide? So, um, so we have a next slide. Yeah, there we go. So many of you, I suspect, are familiar with ISS. We've been in this community for a, a very long time. In fact, we 
built and validated the first uh, production scale SCMS and have uh, provided certificates, uh, previous plug fests. Um, we operate a SCMS uh, production level system that uh, is compliant with a variety of, of standards uh, backed by proprietary HSM technology has been optimized based on uh, some of the things we've learned from past experience in large scale deployments and uh, stress testing of uh, production certificate deployments. Um, we found that uh, you know, we really needed to invest in backend technology that would uh, operate at, at you know, large scale volumes. We offer certificates for both uh, OBUs and RSUs. If you jump to the next slide, uh, unlike some of the other presenters here, we're, we're really not offering a, uh, an explicit test station where you get to check the box and, and run through a series of tests. Typically for the, the past several plug fests, we've been issuing uh, batches of certificates that you can download that should be interoperable with uh, most equipment vendors and, and other SCMS providers. Uh, so very similar to what we've done for other plug fests, you shouldn't see much of a change if you go to the website shown there. Uh, you should be able to either use an existing account if you had one from a previous plug fest or create a new account, simple form that you fill in to request access. And uh, with that, you'll have access to our, uh, our portal where all the documentation for the, the test cases that are provided for the ability to download certificate bundles is all available there. Um, one thing that is relatively new, I think this was available at the previous plug fest, but um, we do have a, a panel where you can request certificates with either very short expiration deadlines or certificates that already are marked as expired. So if you wanted to test your ability to accept or to process uh, you know, nearly expired or expired certificates and certificate update requests, uh, you can experiment with those and download those. Um, for support, um, there is a support line that you can use. That is a recommended way to get quick response. If you have any issues or challenges, uh, you can also contact me directly. So that's my, uh, my contact info on there. And uh, we will have uh, some office hours set up. So um, we, uh, uh, we'll have some time set up where uh, if people want to specifically schedule a session, if you're having issues with uh, installing certificates or want to better understand how the process works, we'd be happy to help you with that. So um, more details will be provided on that as we get a little closer to the plug fest and exactly when and how that'll work. But um, that will likely be remote support. So we'll probably have somebody available on, a, on like a, a Zoom or a video call so that uh, they can answer your questions and get you whatever support and files that you need. So uh, again, looking forward to uh, getting feedback from people on you know, the, the new test capabilities, the, the expired certificates and the batch download. Um, and uh, if you have any issues with any of that, getting access to the site, getting an account or using the, uh, the documentation and the certs themselves, feel free to, uh, you know, preferred way go through the support channel. But if, if there's any issues with that or you're not getting a quick response, contact me directly and I'll make sure we get you the help you need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brian. That was a great presentation. Um, for our next presentation, we're going to have Bill McKinley from Keysight. So he has a, a very large overview. Um, they also had some exciting news about their um, with their acquisition of Norsys and their Wavy tools as well. Um, so I'm going to get the presentation set for Bill, and um, and you will be on your way. Thanks a lot, Bill. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, hi everyone, uh, Bill McKinley here. Um, I'm on my own, uh, you may have noticed that I was supposed to be sharing this platform with Manfred Miller, who was the uh, CEO of Nordsys. And the news that Ryan alluded to is that Nordsys, a, a company based in Braunschweig in Germany, who we've been working with for maybe four years or maybe more, um, we've now merged, so uh, Nordsys are indeed part of Keysight, and so all that um, the product portfolio, which I'll come to in a moment, is now part of the Keysight uh, product line. So Manfred, unfortunately, couldn't make it this evening, uh, our time. So um, as my first time I've presented uh, Nordsys product line. So anyway, I'll uh, do my best to answer any questions. But let me start off with our uh, traditional, if you like, product overview. 
So yeah, let's leave this slide just for a moment. Uh, so we are, so we've been to several plug fests, uh, all of them, uh, the Omnia plug fests, and uh, we do participate in other organization uh, test events. But we are um, developed our equipment uh, around the Omnia test case requirements, so we can simulate uh, real world scenarios. We have these uh, software applications that you can see where we can create uh, software applications. We essentially download them into our instruments. Um, the big box uh, is our LTE V2X generator with PC5 and also UU interface. And the instrument on top is a GNSS emulator, which are which are a requirement for uh, CV2X. But essentially we can simulate environments. We'll come to that in a moment. We have software that can simulate um, our can monitor the live traffic and, and present them uh, in real time. And we can, we can simulate multiple stations, which we'll come to in a moment. And the, the, the text underneath, I won't go through, you can read them or we get a copy of the slides, but the wave B is the, uh, I guess, um, a Nordsys uh, creation. The, uh, they've kind of licensed that wave B moniker. And we've, as I said, we've been working with them for several years. So this creation software tools, ITS stack, and uh, we'd be touch monitor our uh, Norsus products. Okay, thanks. If, uh, if you go to the next slide. So this is what we'll see in the, the plug fest, um, what we had before. So we see our CV2X test equipment, our uh, test setup, our test set can support both the PC5 and UU interface. It can support um, up to 50, independent virtual fully fully stacked uh, stations um, so we can create uh, very complicated scenarios and if you look at the map little diagram you see it was uh, we simulated a scenario in New York but um, New York City um, so but we are also able to congest uh, set up a stress test with congestion so up to you know several hundred 800 900 simulated uh, vehicles or stations can be emulated to congested channel. So it's a real stress test um, to test the vehicle works in a very stressful or yeah, congested PC5 link. Uh, we cover all the regions. Um, the instrument itself is 5G ready, although we do support the PC5 release 14, release 15 standard. And of course, we're looking to NRV2X uh, probably coming next year. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Uh, so we do have a um, couple of products. Um, I won't go through the names, but essentially we cover on the left-hand column the protocol test cases for the, the, the Omnia certification from G3161 to 69.2.3, G27, uh, well, 35 description of G2945. Um, we also have another software application that test the physical layer, so the RF layer. We, we actually cover GCF certified test cases as well, but and for this uh, purpose, for the Omnia, we, we cover the, um, yeah, the, the, the physical layer or lower layer um, transmitter and receiver test cases. And you can see um, some of the diagrams uh, on the right-hand side. So it's a full from lower physical layer all the way up to the application layer. And as I mentioned, the application layer, uh, which is the, the uppermost layer, we can add congestion and uh, set up a variety of use cases. And we'll come to in a moment the, um, the application and the use cases that we're intending to bring to Malaga. Okay, so, so on the bench then, this is a essential block diagram of what we're gonna show, um, and which is a little bit separate to the actual test cases. This will be used in both the, running the, the actual tests, but also as a demo that we're planning to do on the Tuesday, just to kind of show what we can do. So to going around and uh, kind of anti-clockwise, we'll start at the left-hand side. We have our, everything is automated, right? So we have a test automation platform, we call it, which is our automation test executive that uh, we set up the scenario, we set up the test cases or whatever we want to do. Uh, <clears throat> We essentially kick off the execution and we have this CV2X creator and director applications, a bit essentially our simulation environment. Uh, so you see a little map we're simulating, in this case, uh, some intersection in some part of the world. Of course, we'll have 
the Malaga or the DECRA test track um, fully simulated in our um, use cases. As downloaded into the, our UXM 5G test setup and the, uh, our MXG or GNSS emulator. And that uh, then set up, oh, I'm sorry, if you go back just, just for a moment, please I'll continue on. Yeah, so the, these essentially create the, the V2X messages. So BSMs or CAM denim in a European format with the GNSS. But we can also add PropSim. So that's a channel emulator that you can see between the, our instruments and the device on the test. A PropSim is a so RF channel emulator that we can simulate, if you like, the real world uh, in a, on the bench. So we can do fading profiles, um, well, all, all the you know, rather fading to Doppler to also the specific CV2X uh, fading profiles, but also we can download um, antenna patterns. So we're working with a company called Molex. They've got a new PC5 or 5.9 gigahertz antenna we're working with them to embed their antenna test pattern into PropSim. So that's a, essentially a realistic test. Anyway, we'll uh, send us all the information to the device. At the top right, we have an HMI. We have a, another application called CarKit. And this essentially replicates an HMI display on a vehicle. Uh, we're actually going to have a vehicle with this running on a tablet. But you can see we have essentially the mapping system as a vehicle might present it. But then we have, a, for example, an EBL, Electronic Emergency Brake Light Warning. You see a little warning sign come up. And that, uh, is, that, that triggers a timestamp or an event indication that we can then feed back into our automation software. So we can have this closed loop environment. So we can check that the device on the test indeed sees, uh, in this case, an EBL. It sees a, a brake light warning, a hard brake warning. Uh, the HMI should then display the triangle and we can timestamp that to make sure that indeed everything happens appropriately. And the one, one additional thing we're going to add in a little bit of cybersecurity, a kind of proof of concept checking where we have a misbehavior detection and that little symbol there is supposed to be a, kind of a bad actor. So we're going to, um, we're able to create several, let's say misbehaving stations or actors so one would be a vehicle that is pretending to be a, or sending out an emergency vehicle, uh, in this case, a denim, which is a European format. But imagine a normal vehicle being able to, to suddenly turn to emergency vehicle. That's probably not very good. So we'll check that out and notify that. Uh, a vehicle that's supposed to be stationary yet is moving around or a wrong speed for a station, such as a vulnerable road user or a pedestrian traveling at, I don't know, 100 kilometers an hour or something like that. So we're going to create certain, these messages and we're going to see if the device on the test is able to trap those as they should be able to and set up a reporting back to the misbehavior authority. So that's what we're going to set up. Um, the equipment will be used for both the test cases per the Omni Air requirements, but also for this demonstration on Tuesday. Okay, next slide, please. Right, a couple of slides on the Nordsys portfolio, as I mentioned, uh, key site. so as of, actually as of October the 1st, was a couple of days, is the official formal um, day one, we call it, where all the uh, Nordsys employees have key site email addresses and so on. They become part of key site. So we're really excited about that. As I mentioned, we've been working with them for their WAVB uh, tool chain for some years now. But now we're we'll able to integrate their whole product line. And we, we kind of look upon it as a, you know, Keysight is traditionally lab-based. Nordsys are probably more traditionally field-based, their solutions. So we now have a full lab to field portfolio. And this kind of slide is supposed to represent the, you know, the, the migration from, we create executable test cases, we test things in the lab, make sure they work. We can do some functional testing on top of that, and then we can then make sure everything is working in the field with the various uh, uh, products that they have, um, well, that we have now. <laughs> okay, next slide, please. Um, this kind of gives you a quick overview. So the, the top row is for testing and verification, both hardware and software. So they have a, a scalable system. I say they, uh, I keep saying that, we have a scalable system they call Wave B Hive, which can be, which essentially replicates uh, essentially multiple vehicles in a scenario. And it's a very scalable system. Uh, we can come to, uh, we can talk in some detail in Malaga if you like. 
We have a thing called Wave B to go, which we'll, we will have in Malaga, which is essentially a roadside unit that can simulate multiple vehicles in a scenario. So it saves the expense and cost. If you have a device, a vehicle under test driving around, you know, you probably want to employ five, six, seven, ten other vehicles to interact. Well, this Wave B to go essentially simulates the other vehicles in a scenario so that we don't have to go through the expense of uh, having additional vehicles, drivers, killing out the vehicles with OBUs and so on. So we're going to show that in Malaga. The Wave B Touch is our is the uh, handheld uh, tablet. I know Randy Roback from there is uh, uh, uses one of these things. So it's a, essentially a sniffer. It can detect uh, messages over the air. We can see a graphical representation and we can drill down into the, each message to get the details. Uh, Wave B Creator software you've seen before, the car kit I mentioned before, which is this, uh, it's a development kit that can be used to test OBU, rep can, can, yeah, can send the relevant messages in a graphical format to an HMI. And at the bottom row, we see some other tools that we have got. We have a Wave B Plus, which is essentially a development platform of an OBU. We'll have one of those in Malaga. We have our roadside units that are, uh, we could, uh, Tegra may, Decra, I think I've uh, installed perhaps in their track already, and various modules that we can, that can be used in a development uh, system. And then some core software, they, they supply our full stack, all the regions uh, are supported. Okay, one final slide, I think. Yeah, so this kind of shows you the, the, the flow. We have V2X simulation, both our UXM instrument platform, Wave Behive. We have the creator that creates a scenario, the to go that essentially replicates that in a, in a test track, which we will have in Malaga. The Wave B Plus, which is development platform of an OBU, car kit for looking at HMIs, the Wave B Road, which is a yeah, an RSU type device and the Wave B Touch uh, um, monitoring um, tablet for looking at over the air messages. So it's a pretty exciting time. The, my last slide, I think, is just what we're intending to demonstrate. Um, so this won't be in the lab, but we're going to essentially have a car. We'll bring a car along, we'll kit it out with a, this, this Wave B Plus, which is this OBU development kit, a car kit HMI, and a tablet. On the track, we'll have this wave B to go creating this scenario, which is, and we'll have an EBL, a road, roadworks warning, and some speed limit uh, infrastructure vehicle information with um, a, a speed limit um, setup. So we'll, in the demo vehicle, we'll, we'll have, uh, so we'll, well, it's a fairly large vehicle. Hopefully, we'll be able to take several people in just to see things working. Uh, hopefully in, in this uh, live demonstration. So that will be on Tuesday. So this will be in addition to what the NordSys team will bring along in terms of interop testing. So they will have their Wave B uh, plus OBU to interop with other OBUs. So we should have a full, full comprehensive set of test capability in Malaga, and we're really looking forward to it. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for listening. And I'll be hey. around for any questions that come up. Okay. Thank you very much, Bill. That was a very comprehensive overview of the testing. Um, next, we have uh, Tony Bento from SEA and the National Instruments, or NI, to give an overview of the tools that they're going to present um, at the PlugFest. All right, Tony, it's all yours. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, so Gert and I are the ones in contact. Here's our uh, overview of our offering. And it's really in these, these, these three parts. You can see that there's a conformance tester, a functional tester, and a sniffer. The conformance tester, that's our bench test that we use specifically for the physical and uh, protocol testing. And, and, and one thing that we really look forward to in Malaga is that in previous uh, plug uh, fest, we've stayed very busy at the physical level, really just getting the device tested across, across all the tests, across the three GPP. And it's been good. We've, we've learned a lot. Um, we've had these other protocol tests that are available, and we've just never quite got to them. And so we really do look forward to, to, to getting um, to them. Uh, one thing I do want to note, too, is that we are Omnier certified. And I want to put that in as much of a plug for Omnier as it is for us. I think Omnier has done a really nice job with this certification. For some of you that attended the VDEX um, Summit in Washington, the, the U.S. Department of Transportation put on recently, one big issue with VDEX is really gaining confidence. And I think the certification that Omniair provides really does help us with this. And I think the conformance tester is an example of that. 
Uh, we also have a functional tester and the functional tester is more of a tester at the application level. We don't usually show this one at the, the plug fest, but it's, it's, it's certainly a, a, a big part of what we do on the testing. And so that's where we go through all the different day one use cases. We have about 20 of those that, that, that we go through. And then the third one is the sniffer and the sniffer is our one for our, our, our field test. And one thing you might notice as you look across all three of these, they are all based on modular hardware. And so we're able to mix and match some of our hardware across, across each of them. And so that's the basis. You can see a lot of the, the NI hardware there and, and working with the, um, the SEA software. And if you move to the next slide, this is where we talk more about the, the, the software itself. And so SEA has this basis of test master. Um, if you're at all familiar with SEA, it's been a, a product and integration company for, for over 20 years. And test master has been used for this for the integration of the tests. And now we've added the VDEX capability um, to that. And so you can see in the middle that it is based off of a GUI. So it's got the operator interface. You can see at the top that the operator interface can be the operator itself, or we can tie into whatever custom environments that the customers are using. We have a full set of APIs. And so whether someone wants to tie into Python or LabVIEW, or whatever the case may be. Um, within Test Master, not only is it GUI, but we have the test execution. You've heard from some of the presenters, you have to go through the different set of tests and do the automation. And what we do is, 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 is set these up. For example, um, the three GPP tests that, that are set up from, from Omnia, we go through a whole set of automation there with the, the, the functions. And another note I will say is we do have the hardware abstraction layer. And the hardware abstraction layer is very important because we certainly tie in to NI or National Instruments hardware. They're our go-to-market partner. But you can see we can have product specific hardware and we can even work with some of the other companies that have, have, have talked here for interfacing some of their hardware in um, as well. So if anyone wonders about some of that, we would be certainly glad to, to talk about it. So we can tie into different hardware and then you can see um, I, I, on the, the left hand side there, we can certainly do the same with the software. We tie into a lot of different software products too. We have the main base of the measurements control and emulation and then tie into others. So they can test the DUTs. And of course the DUTs are typically these VDEX devices like an OBU or an RSU. Next slide. And so um, with this, I'll just, this is a summary of what we're gonna talk about or we'll have available um, at the plug fest. So first off, we'll be the conformance tester for the OBUs and RSUs. And I'll say again that at the previous plug fest, we spent a lot of time on, on, on the physical test that that's the 761, the 3GPP, if I can say, I think we're pretty good at actually testing those. So we look forward to everybody bringing their devices in and continue to test on that. But again, what we really look forward to is to move into some of these other tests um, with, with, with our platform as well. For example, like you can see there, the SA, the, the, the J3161, as well as the J2545 as well. So certainly look forward to, to testing with those. Um, you see, I mentioned the functional tester again, and that's where we get into all these different parts, the VDEX, the GNSS, the automotive buses, with these full catalog of, of day one use cases. Now we won't formally have that at the, at the plug fest, but anybody that wants to talk about those, we certainly would be glad to do so. And our last capability will be the one with the, the, the field testing, the VDEX sniffer. So we'll have it, uh, we'll have it available in a car also. So we will be independently be able to run around with it. And then it will also be in, in, in Randy Roebuck's um, yellow box that he puts a lot of different functionality into. And uh, I really actually think Randy's done a nice job with that box to, to, to compare our sniffer and run that along with other sniffers as well. And so that's the overall part in terms of what, what we'll be showing. And uh, if there's any other questions or comments, I'll be glad to, to address them in the, in the Q&A. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, we're very excited to have uh, you and your system uh, represented at, uh, at the Omnia PlugFest. And for any um, device makers that are out there who haven't signed up for the PlugFest, there is a link in the chat box. Um, we we're hoping to have uh, the last people who sign up to do it within the next week or two as Randy and I put together the testing schedule. As you can see, it's extremely um, comprehensive testing much more than you see um, in any other testing event around the world. Um, I don't know too many places where you have 15 different test stations, everyone working together um, in this very cooperative state. 
Um, up next, we have um, Alon Vufo aspirant, but unfortunately, he's unable to uh, make the call. But uh, Randy is graciously um, uh, just can uh, help us do the overview for aspirant. So, Randy, if you're on, um, I'll get to the first slide for you. Oh, thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, Spiron uh, test system. They've they've been at every plug fest so far. They have advanced their test system. They went from the uh, functional performance uh, test tool um, in testing the um, sixty oh nine middle layer. Uh, uh, for dot two security for dot three network services and some of the J2945. They have also advanced it to start covering applications. Uh, Dirk showed a presentation on their new application tester at the M City Plug Fest. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't provide it due to customs and shipping issues of the last plug fest, but it will be here new. We do have quite a few. We have the two test laboratories, um, DECRA and TTA, that it uses the Spiron test system. And on uh, that Monday uh, morning, late morning, uh, they will um, give an, a little more in depth on the applications portion. So uh, all the current users know what the new capabilities is. Uh, here on the virtual platform, uh, they're showing the forward collision warning, the uh, abnormal vehicle warning and brake warning uh, portion of it. And we'll be very interested to see how this performs uh, in Malagar. Next slide. This here shows the uh, conformance test system. If you've been familiar with it, uh, it uh, on the left hand side, it shows the test cases that gets walked through and implemented through it. Uh, my understanding is they're using a uh, a uh, their own V to X radio proxy uh, with the uh, software moving forward, and uh, and this uh, basically steps through each step to show its conformancy. Next slide. Here's the VDX scenarios that uh, Spiron says it's covering. Um, uh, most of these are very familiar. It shows uh, the ones they do in Etsy, the ones they do per the SAE or used in US, North America, in Korea. And they also list uh, the applications in China. We do want all the devices to go through each test station through the North American protocols and make sure that uh, it meets all the test cases order to move towards uh, certification. Once your device gets through all the, um, uh, the test stations the first or second time, uh, you, the, your device will be rescheduled uh, multiple times there and feel free to uh, walk through their Etsy in uh, China and hopefully you bring enough devices uh, order to do that. Next slide. Here they show uh, what standards they support uh, for, as far as the Etsy standards, uh, from a base perspective, from a conformance, uh, uh, test specifications, and those test specifications written here are from the old um, um, days for call out, and uh, I can reference the new specifications according to Omnier numbers moving forward. In the Omnier, um, in the middle column that shows their Etsy standards, and then on the 
uh, right side, uh, it shows the uh, China specifications. Next. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Randy. That was a great overview. Um, up next, we have Magesh from Marvin, um, and they're also representing um, their company. And so we're very excited to see them in Malaga, Spain as well. Um, Magesh, if you are there, um, the floor will be yours. Uh, hi, hi, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Uh, do you mind going to the next slide? Uh, we have a tool called Mahansim that uh, uses uh, TCI messaging uh, to connect uh, to the OBU and uh, send scenarios. Uh, so we use uh, TCI 31611 and uh, TCI SUT control uh, commands to send to the uh, SUT. And um, we also plan to add, add uh, 2945 soon. It's like a minor change. Uh, so our commands uh, will simulate virtual timestamp, positioning, uh, light lawn, elevation, and uh, different vehicle dynamics such as speed, heading, and other uh, messages. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so our system will connect to uh, Ethernet or switch or like a router and it will be connected to an SUT, which has a, a TCI module. And uh, for this test, we also need the uh, VTX applications to be enabled. So our traffic generator will uh, send out VTX messages like CBSMs. Uh, and uh, on Mahan SIM side, we'll be running some scenarios like uh, emergency electronic brake light, forward collision warning, and others. And um, so we do need some changes in the TCI uh, for further validation. Uh, but for now, we can uh, do some tests like uh, to check if the SUT is raising different uh, warnings, like uh, emergency brake light warning or forward collision warning. Uh, next slide. Uh, so right now in uh, SUT control, there are uh, multiple messages such as set GPS time, set latitude, set longitude. Uh, so what is happening is Mahansim has to send eight commands to the SUT and it receives eight responses from the SUT. And the whole thing should happen is 0 0.1 second uh, so that the BSMs are getting generated at that speed of 10 hertz. Uh, so we, we would propose uh, a different message such as set GPS data that will contain all of these fields. Uh, minimal eight, eight fields will be good enough, like a timestamp from GPS, latitude, longitude, elevation, and uh, other, other fields. So that will definitely reduce the network latency. Next slide. So this is the issue we are having. Uh, first we said GPS time and we get response. The next one latitude uh, and the response and uh, six more of them. Next. Uh, so the uh, new message that we have proposed will have all these fields. Next slide. Uh, so the number of messages sent uh, to the SUT will definitely reduce by two uh, because it'll be have one uh, set GPS data and uh, SUT will send back a response. It will definitely improve the performance. And we also propose another uh, enhancement to TCI specification is uh, a way for Vahan Sim to verify if the uh, SUT has really raised a notification to the driver or to the screen. So um, we can have, we can enhance the uh, TCI indication and add an event enumeration 
like a app notif occurred. So this will tell Mahan Sim that the application has really raised a warning. And we can further enhance the app notification, uh, sorry, okay. event parameters to provide some more details regarding the app, such as which app actually triggered warning or advisory. And we can also have uh, more fields such as distance to event or time to event so that our uh, app test system can verify whether these uh, parameters are within a particular range to do further validation. Uh, next slide. Um, so in order to uh, tell the OB, uh, SUT that uh, it is expecting a application warning, one sim will first have to send a new message or start app notif and receive a response. Whenever SVT encounters an application uh, warning situation or uh, or advisory, it will have to prepare an indication with an app notif occurred and send it to Mahan Sim. Mahan Sim will do the uh, declare the result whether it is passed or failed, whether the fields are in the proper range. Next. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Yeah, I think the next slide is your conclusion slide. Yep. So, yeah. yep. Thank so, up, yep. So, thank you very much. Up next, we have um, William Martin from uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation, Saxon Labs, um, to give an overview um, of the of the cave in the box and some other um, some other tools that they're going to be using at the Plugfest. So, we're very excited. The, um, that the U.S. Department of Transportation will be participating this year and checking out all the different devices and what state of readiness they're in. Um, so without further ado, uh, we'll pass it on to, to Martin. Hi, thank you, Ryan. Um, so for the first slide we have, um, oh, sorry, could you find the, the Via X Hub slide? <laughs> I wanted to start on that one, yeah. So um, most of the tools that we'll be bringing are um, built around VitaX Hub. So VitaX Hub is our open source um, middleware software that allows for message exchange between equipment and a computer and um, any other um, equipment that would be using SAEJ 2735 messages. So for example, um, if you have a traffic signal controller um, that sends NTCIP 1202 messages, you'd be able to UDP forward those messages into the SPAT plugin in VDAX Hub, which would then translate that message into um, SAEJ 2735. Uh, same with many other messages and plugins that we have. Um, those, as soon as they're into the VDAX Hub core um, by their respective plugins, uh, you'd be able to either immediate message forward those, those messages um, to an RSU or to another computer where you'd be able to um, manipulate the messages any way um, you'd please. Um, and uh, same vice versa, uh, messages from an RSU or any other um, equipment can be sent um, into VDAX Hub um, by the message receiver plugin. Um, next slide. Um, one of the tools we'll be bringing is Cave in a Box. Um, that's CAV Education in a Box. Um, it was meant for educating researchers, university students, uh, new hires, but it can also be used by labs and for testing purposes. Um, we've used it uh, many times um, in our testing for other, for many use cases, um, as it's a, a rugged kit and it's very uh, portable. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can see a picture of uh, the cave in a box uh, that we'll be bringing over to Plugfest. Uh, this one contains a traffic signal controller, um, a VDAX hub on a computer, and a roadside unit. Uh, we'll be bringing a CVDAX roadside unit, but any other um, kind of roadside unit can be um, connected into the network switch in the box and be used. Um, another tool is um, the RC test plans. It's actually a tool built into VDAX hub. 
Um, it's also open source. It allows for testing messages, uh, verifying messages on a roadside unit. Um, so messages, a sample message can be sent um, through a TCP server with a roadside unit or the unit under test. Um, and uh, once those messages are sent, they would be, um, the roadside unit should send a response back to, to a sniffer running on, on the computer that has VDAX hub. Um, and that, that way the message being the same side unit. And Sorry, I, I may have muted myself just now. I'm not sure how, does anybody know how long I've been muted? No, you've been fine. It was just for a second. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so that message being sent to and um, received back uh, to the unit under test would help verify that the roadside unit is um, compliant. Yeah. All right, Martin, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we have our, our, our last presentation um, will be with DECRA with uh, Rosario Morales, um, but I don't think she's on either and Randy um, will take over um, and discuss some of her slides and some of the, the capabilities that they're going to do. Um, but as an Omni or authorized test lab, they'll have access to all of the authorized tools. So they'll be running multiple test stations, including applications and bench testing using um, using our uh, certified devices from Keysight um, and SEA. So we'll uh, hand it over to Randy. Hello, this is Randy Roebuck. Uh, we did the DECRA Plug Fest back about 2019. Very successful, very capable, uh, very impressive facilities and uh, team. Uh, that's running uh, connected vehicle uh, testing technologies. This shows their high speed track. Actually, it's in uh, Germany at their uh, headquarters and they do regulatory performance, functional, interoperability, conformance, and they also do environmental there. Uh, a very excellent facility the technology center is about uh, 30 minutes outside of Malagar uh, city center uh, and very nice uh, facility. Next slide. Um, we first started in a, and qualified them for the DSRC technology. And since then, they've moved on to the LTE or the C to B to X technology uh, in the laboratory. And we hope to qualify the test track that uh, you'll be using in PugFest as an authorized test site along with it. Um, they also have a, a sister group here in the United States where we've granted test laboratory um, uh, certification to do UHF, RFID, or known as ISO 6C uh, 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 testing here in uh, North America. Next slide. Um, they have a whole, they had a very impressive facility and applications and um, they can do basically dangerous uh, traffic situations in a safe environment uh, using what I call ghost BSMs or cooperative perception uh, where uh, they take the device, put it in the car and can simulate vehicles around it and on their facility to uh, show the different uh, scenarios. Next slide. Here on this slide, uh, their application testing can care, cover both the United States. You can see that on the left, which follows our uh, test procedures. 780A, which is the V2V, and 
B, which is the V to I uh, test procedures. Um, they also do China, which is listed in the center. And they also uh, list Etsy uh, can be done on the right hand side. Of course, uh, since Omnir has been focused on North America and its certifications, we'd like your devices to go through the uh, United States uh, versions of them first, and then uh, uh, can proceed forward to the other uh, scenarios. So please bring devices uh, in order to perform uh, the different uh, uh, configurations uh, that you want. And they have updated the application specs for how they perform it, and they will; those will be um, uh, distributed later this week, um, uh, where we put our so-called our PugFest uh, uh, documents. Okay. Next. No, thank you, Randy. That's it. Um, the last one was just the the, the exit slide. Okay. Um, thank you very much for uh, that presentation. Um, but Randy did segue into something important about letting us know um, if your devices are capable of testing these other protocols for either um, the European standards or Chinese. Um, some of our members have uh, intimated that they would like to test um, some of the other protocols. Um, although we are focused on North America, we're hoping that you know as you get further through the tests and advanced tests, and you have some additional time, we would love for, uh, for those devices to go through these extra, to go through the extra uh, testing slots. Um, I'd like to welcome back Jason, if he has any closing remarks. Um, well, I, I just you wanted to say, I just wanted to say quickly, thank you to all of the test station uh, participants in, in this year's PlugFest for providing us a very comprehensive uh, view of the, the cutting edge test systems we'll be bringing as well as the capabilities of some of our laboratories. I believe we'll have over a dozen test stations of probably some that you haven't even heard from today uh, at our PlugFest. Uh, I think that's one of the great things about on the air PlugFest is that we do bring together that uh, complete testing ecosystem for, for connected vehicle technologies from SCMS providers uh, to test equipment providers, uh, to device manufacturers, uh, module makers. Um, it really is the one place uh, that you can get a very good sense of how your device is doing against industry standards. As Ryan mentioned, for the first time, we will offer some testing against um, European uh, and Chinese test specs uh, per the request of the participating vendors. But it is just a fantastic week-long event. I encourage you to sign up and check it out uh, if you've not had the opportunity to do so before. Also, we will have on the Tuesday of PlugFest, October 25th, a connected mobility workshop as well as tours of the, um, of the testing at PlugFest and some technical demonstrations. So uh, you can sign up for that again on our, um, uh, on our registration page. I'll ask Ryan to put something in the chat box on that. And, uh, and if you're interested in Omni-Air and being part of what we're trying to do and uh, trying to drive um, trust into, that, uh, into the industry through testing and certification, then please do uh, feel free to reach out to us and. Uh, and uh, check out our website for more information. And with that, thank you everyone today. And we look forward to seeing you, each of you uh, in Mulligan in just a few short weeks. Thank you.